Good morning, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> members of the board, commissioner, staff, and audience. Uh, my name is Matthew Scott. I'm a citizen of the town of Belgrade. I'm here testifying in opposition to the rules based on a number of concerns that I have historically. I ought to say, good to see you, Mary. It's been a while, Mary Salem, legal counsel to the board. Uh, many of you may know that I served on this board for about eight years, eight years and three months, in fact. Um, I'm a retired chief biologist from the main DEP. I retired back in 1988. Uh, they no longer have that designation in the department, no commissioner, but it was a chief biologist back in those days. Now, prior to that time, I spent about 11 years in fisheries working on a number of issues in Maine, especially the mining disaster that we had at Callahan and Kerr American. We went to a lot of experience um, in seeing classification changes. <clears throat> now in the early 1970s up in northern Maine and eastern Maine, the timberlands were under a spruce budworm infestation, requiring a lot of time for seasonal work uh, with a number of biologists and researchers. But the spring impact to non target species in those Class A waters was a concern at that time. And at that same time, <clears throat> Superior Oil and Louisiana Land Exploration announced a major copper strike uh, at Bald Mountain, which is west of Portage Lake. And that's been a lot of concern, as you know, in the news media, and it stimulated the staff to develop these rules. And I'd like to compliment the staff for a lot of work that they put into the development of this. I know it's taken a lot of time. But the problem is back in <clears throat> these, the, the days of discovery of this strike, we were scrambling as policymakers and DEP leadership, legislators, there were no rules then. So many legislators discussed the idea of changing classifications of water quality. <clears throat> Most of those streams at that time were Class A and still are in the area of the mine uh, discovery. But changes were concerned in the classification system were on the table. Even declassification, similar to what we did in 1963 for the Prestil stream due to a sugar beet operation in the town of Easton. In 1963, the legislature also declassified first and second ponds in Blue Hill to allow the waste discharge into those waters at that time. So it was my opinion that we <clears throat> were concerned about classes of water at that time and protecting aquatic life. So what kind of assurances did we have? In those days, we had about 50 employees at the DEP. We didn't have a large staff. And uh, in 1979, Phyllis Austin unveiled a story for the Maine Times. And I was in disagreement with my commissioner at that time, professionally disagreement, not hostile, um, where Ms. Austin, she quoted a number of legislators and also the commissioner based on some historical work that we had done of what might happen in this classification uh, issue regarding waste discharges for mining operations. My, my opinion prevailed that it would be a miracle if, if mining operations could produce an effluent that would protect Class A waters. And my commissioner was quoted at that time that this could be done. However, in the last interview that she had, she asked them asked if he could give 100% guaranteed protection. And he had some reservations at that time. And she quoted basically, that's Scott's position, quote unquote. Well, it all resolved into Speaker of the House, John Martin came to rescue here. We proposed to the Energy Natural Resources Committee at the work session to upgrade the DEP had talked about upgrading classifications and doing away with Class D, which we had. So Class AA, A, B, and C waters were established. 
and, and the legislature took action on that, and John Martin was the sponsor and championed the bill at that time. The intent then, and as of today, was to be no discharges to Class AA water, and no discharge to GPA Great Ponds at the time. And that system we have today uh, still exists. There's been a number of reclass meetings and a number of, of meetings required by EPA through these years since I've left. But what's true today, as it was back then, as you know, the legislature makes and the legislature takes. And that's where we are today as far as future changes probably that will occur. When I held my last reclass meeting in 1988, we continued those standards for the class. There were narratives at the time, and Dave Cotemarch and Susan Davies and Leon Samites went on to continue to do the research for the numeric standards that uh, is prevailed for aquatic life. And they're in place today, and I think that that's my concern about uh, rules as far as mining, because all of these streams in and around Bald Mountain have been designated as A, double A, and A waters. And the narrative standards state pretty clear that aquatic life shall be as naturally occurs in A and no discharges to double A. Well, my position today continues to be, you know, part of this whole living history of water quality in Maine and the lectures that I do around the state from water quality, what it was like in 1935, up through to 65, and then the progress the department and staff have made from 65 up through to 2015. And those presentations have made in a number of locations around Maine, and we extol the fact that Maine has some of the best water quality standards in the country. So my concern from a large-scale mining operation is the fragmentation of the habitat, the acid mine discharges, the loss of ecosystem, what I call interconnectivity between terrestrial and aquatic systems. It's a very high risk to accept, in my opinion. And the after effects of mining are historically forever. They, they just, the scars are left there. In 2005, the Maine legislature declared the eastern brook trout as Maine's heritage fish species. Now, the Ball Mountain site for potential mine is located in this eastern brook trout habitat. Maine has 90% of the remaining habitat of this species in the northeast. It's pretty amazing. So I think we should do everything possible to protect the species. We should not be developing rules to encourage mining in those habitat areas. And therefore, mining of these habitats is highly risky to the survival of the species. So I conclude by saying that's my basis for opposition, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for listening. Yes. Uh, recognizing the fact that we have a rule in place right now and the proposed changes are designed to uh, have those conform to uh, public law. Are you saying that you are against the changes that the DEP has proposed to the existing uh, regulation and, and allow that to continue to exist? I, if a permit was made by an applicant to propose a mine activity, the direct discharge or any indirect discharge is going to impact the aquatic environment and the habitat in the area. I don't see how the rules could allow that impact to occur to degrade the classification of that receiving water. That's what I'm saying. So therefore, I'm opposed to, to the rules. The, if, if you would allow a, an applicant to discharge, you might have to change the classification. And I doubt it politically that would happen, but uh, that could happen. This depends on the value of the find. 
guess I'm, I'm a bit I'm a bit confused because I don't see anything here that talks about classifications. That's right. There is no there is no discussion there at all. We're not, we're not in the process of looking at classifications. So I'm trying to understand your view with regard to um, these rules and the changes to them. And if I hear what you say, you're you're in favor of leaving the rule as it is, stand, and not making any changes to it. And, and again, if the applicant applies, I'm sure that the applicant can't comply to wherever the waste is going to be created. Thank you, Mr. All right. Thank you. Yes, Matt, could you just um, repeat one more time for us? Because the definitions of class AA and class A and B and C uh, have very small definitions applied to them, particularly in relationship to whether you can actually put any uh, additional material into a class AA or A. Can you, uh, again, yeah, just kind of regurgitate that quickly if you would? The, narrat the narrative, um, Dr. Isler, is that the, there's no discharges allowed to double A waters. There's no discharges allowed to GPA waters either. Now, class A water, you can allow a discharge as long as it's equal to or better than. And that's it. Class B water, we recognize some change would occur. And class C water is even a lower class, which is significant changes in water quality. But we established those years ago to protect the habitat of those receiving waters. How would groundwater play into this? In other well, words, you put it in the ground and it comes out into a stream. Is that discharge to the stream? Well, I would consider that to be an indirect discharge. I don't know how that would be regulated with the rules, but that certainly would be an indirect discharge to the receiving water some way. Thank you very much. Okay.